Hey, it's Rainiax Mel, the train tutor, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. Now, in this Let's Make, we're going to be looking at continuing our series on battlefield basics and we're going to be adding defences and obstacles to our battlefield, mainly in the form of infantry defences such as razor wire, minefields, etc. Okay, so let's get stuck in and come on over to the bench. Okay guys, when it comes down to general infantry obstacles, there was a whole different way of sort of slowing down troops. Now the important thing to realise is infantry obstacles weren't designed to stop troops. Troops will always get through. The idea behind infantry obstacles is to fix troops in one place, exposed in the open for the machine gunners to slaughter. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now we're going to be coming, a, we're going to be covering a, a few different techniques, okay? We're going to do uh, the sort of crisscross sort of entanglement ones. I don't know what they're called, but we'll use uh, sprues for those. We're going to do uh, a couple of sets of barbed wire and some minefields in this one, guys. So we'll start off with the crissy crossy ones. And if someone in the comments can let me know what they are, that'll be a bonus. Right. So with that in mind, I'm going to push all these bits to one side. Yeah, and start off with some sprue. Now, as all good gamers, we've all got bits of sprue, etc. You should always save your sprue. Okay, it is a mountain of resource for terrain building. Okay, so with that in mind, I've got myself, yeah, some bits I've cut off here. Nice straight bits without any bobbles or imprints on them. And what I'm going to do is, very quickly, I'm going to cut these into one inch pieces. Okay, and I'm going to need three one inch pieces, yeah, for each sort of whatever they're called. <laughs> Typical Melvid, eh? Right, let's crack on. Right, guys, so we've cut a load of one inch pieces of this, and then what I've done is with a little bit of super glue, you can use plastic glue with this, yeah, but I've used super glue. Yeah, I've glued them but into a cross, but I've glued them slightly offset. This is because they'll have to sort of crisscross over. Yeah, and if you cross them perfectly in the middle, then the next bar that we put in, it just doesn't sit right. Okay, so after that, you, you take your third and you basically glue it in like that. So that all the joins are going roughly round a middle. Now, it's not perfect. If you want perfect, you really need like sort of square sprues, yeah? But it's good enough for the battlefield. And once it's down, it'll look great. So we're gonna end up putting one there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two more just to go in there. And then that'll be, ah, uh, watch it, sort of, I can never remember the name of these, but that'll be these done. Okay, guys? Right, I'm gonna get gluing these and getting them stuck to my fingers. And once they're done, we'll nip back and I'll show them you then. Now, I've been reliably informed that these are called Czech Hedgehogs, yeah? But whatever they're called, they do look quite nice, don't they? Now, the last thing I did is, once it was all dry, I just came along with my clippers and I just clipped the bottom to sort of make it so it sits flush. It doesn't have to be per perfect because, much like every, all the other pieces, they've got to be gritted up. So any, any sort of imperfections at the bottom can always be hidden with a bit of grit. You know what I mean? And some clump foliage if, if that doesn't sort it. So my next job is I'm going to glue these three down. Yeah, super glue once again. We'll glue these down. We'll put them to one side once they're all glued down. And then we'll bring them back along with all the other bits that we're going to make. Yeah, when it comes to the gritting stage. So, I better crack on with this, Anna. Right, once I've got this done, we'll move over onto barbed wire. Right, guys, while the Czech hedgehogs are drying and setting up, Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do work on some barbed wire. Now there's two barbed wire pieces we're going to do. We're going to do our bog standard barbed wire. Yeah, now this is using this stuff which is double wrap security seal or double wire security seal. Okay, and if I hold it really close you can see it's basically the stuff the wargaming companies use for their barbed wire. Now we have covered barbed wire. There's lots of different ways of making barbed wire and we've covered it in the past. And I'll throw a link up to that video now. And in the glory of, of what, you call it, what we've done in the past, here's some barbed wire I've already prepared. Now this is just this stuff, yeah, wrapped around a bit of doweling, yeah, and it's been given a heavy, heavy wash of brown and black just to darken it up. And we're going to use this on our little EPVC to make our little barbed wire. Okay, but in, with infantry obstacles, they just didn't lay down the barbed wire. They used to do a few different things to sort of keep it in place and to stop it being moved or dragged out of place by tanks. 
Now, one of the common things was just to stick a stake in the ground. And so for that sort of stuff, you can use something like cocktail sticks or a bit of barbecue skewer. Yeah, just snip it off, stick it in so it's about waist height for a model. Yeah, and then lay your watch clip, lay your barbed wire across it. Yeah, for us, we're going to take a step up. And what we've got here is we've got tile spacers. Okay, so that when you're laying out tiles and you're putting tiling somewhere, okay, you put these in between your tiles to make sure they're all evenly spaced. But they make perfect cross frames for us. All we need to do is just glue them down. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do is I've got my piece of EPVC here. Yeah, I'm going to glue these down just along here. And then we're going to come along and we're going to attach some barbed wire to it once it's all gritted up. So I'm going to get stuck into this. Yeah, and we'll come back once I've glued them down. And I'm going to be using a gel glue, gel super glue to get them down, yeah? See you shortly. So there we have it, guys. They're all glued on. Yeah, just a little bit of gel super glue. They've just got to let it to dry, and then what we'll do is we'll grit these up ready for adding the barbed wire. I always add the barbed wire after they've been gritted up. Yeah, I'll explain why when we add the barbed wire, guys. So, put these two aside, and then what we need to do is, yeah... Before we get all, all these gritted up, we'll watch call it. We'll do some more barbed wire. Right, what's next? Okay, another bit of EPVC. This time we're going to do the uh, entanglement barbed wire. This is a special request of Ant Evans. Okay, now entanglement barbed wire is the barbed wire that's sort of laid out in a grid on the floor. Okay, and the idea being that it's a real nightmare to sort of climb over, run across. That sort of stuff. Now, for doing this sort of stuff, once again, you can use all sorts of things to hold, hold the barbed wire. Uh, I was looking at some pictures of the Maginot line, and they'd actually got eye, eye frames, eye beams, holding it up. So embedded in the ground with eye beams across it. But I imagine that could also work against tanks. So I'm going to use that for this. What I'm going to do is, I've got a bit of eye beam here. This is from a company called Evergreen. You can get it also from a company called Plastruct. You can also get this sort of like corrugated sheeting that they use for signs. And if you look down the sign of it, it looks like lots of eye beams. And all you do is you run your blade down each one and you get individual eye beams from it. But this is a little bit thicker, so I'm going to be using this. First thing I need to do is I need to cut off, say, about a centimetre's worth of this. Okay, so I'll cut off a centimetre, then I'll do a few more, yeah, and then we'll come back, okay? Okay, so I decided this was a bit thick in the end, so I've swapped it out for this much thinner one. I've cut off 14 little, they're probably about, just about 8 millimetres, so if I bring those up, little eye frames. Now, all I'm going to do is, I'm going to super glue these on here, much like we did with the others. But before I do, there's a little job I need to do with them. And what I need to do is, because we're going to be trapping wire in them, I need to cut a little, tiny little V at the top. Yeah, so, watching my fingers, very carefully. And if I bring that up to the camera, just so you can see it. Right, do you see that tiny little line that's cut into it? Yeah, we'll use that to hold the wire in place once it's all super glued down. So I've got to go along, I put, put those little cuts into there. Yeah, get my super glue, and then all I'm going to do is, I'm going to glue it onto this base. And you can see, we'll sort of see the pre-marked positions I'm going to put it in. And then we'll be able to wrap the wire along this base, very much like that. So that's the plan, I'm going to do that and I'll bring it back once it's done guys. Okay guys, there you are, that's that in. As you can see they're all glued down now, they're super glued down and they've got the little V's in. Yeah, it's for it to hold in the wire. Now we've got to leave these to completely dry before we grit them up and then you know we'll paint them and we'll add the wire last, much like with our other barricades. So it's time to put these down and move on to minefields next. So I'll put these down, we'll get set up for minefields and we'll come back shortly. Okay then, minefields. Now minefields is a bit of an elephant in the room, yeah, because technically minefields you wouldn't be able to see. I mean, mines are hard enough to spot, yeah, I mean they're damn near impossible to spot when you look at and when they're 1 to 1 scale, never mind when they're 1 to 50 scale, you know what I mean? Yeah, so when it comes to doing minefields for our battle tables, we have to do sort of 
You either have to do symbolic minefields, which are patches of grass, maybe with a little sign in them, or you have to make obvious mines to say, look, they're mines, and you have to suspend disbelief. You know what I mean, for the time period. Now, there's a couple of ways of making mines. You can have the little ones that have the little uh, flick triggers on them that you step on. Yeah, and for that, you just need a little sort of rod of some sort. You could use cocktail stick. I've defaulted and I've used a little bit of brass rod. Yeah, and I've cut them into tiny little ones like that. So what I'll do is I'll come along, bit of super glue in there. Yeah, and with a lot of swearing, yeah, I will stick them into the holes in that EPVC. Yeah, so they're just popping out, ready for gritting. Now, the other thing you can do is the actual sort of tank mines. Yeah, now they're the ones that are a lot more bigger and would normally have so something to step on. Yeah, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. I could look, cut a little bit of plastic card or something and drop it on the top and give it sort of a little nipple to step on, but... I'm not worried. Now these are screw heads. Yeah. Yeah, they're the covers that you put on posi screws. Yeah, and all I've done, oh, throw one away. There you are, I'll grab a different one. All I've done is I've clipped that bit off, yeah, so we can glue them down. So the next job is I just need to glue these down. So let's put a blob there. And we'll put a blob there so we can do one of the rods and one of the mines. So, rod first. You watch me get my fingers super glued to this. Yeah, there we go. And then one of the actual patches. So, we'll drop that one in there. And there you have it. That's all there is to doing minefields. Okay, two simple ways of suggesting it. Now I'm gonna drop some more rods on this. Yeah, drop a few more in, drop a few more of these in, and then once that's done and it's all dry, yeah, I'll bring it back to show you just before we start with all the gritting, okay? So just quickly, guys, there you are. There, that's them all glued on. I know it looks a little bit silly. It looks like Smarties, doesn't it? All right, all we're going to do now is leave these to dry, and then we're going to come back with all our little bases we've prepared. We've got a check hedgehogs. We've got a standard barbed wire. We've got our entanglement barbed wire, and we've got these minefields now. So we'll get those done. And yeah, and once they're all dry, we'll bring them back, and we'll get them all gritted up, ready for painting up, yeah? Right, see you shortly. Okay guys, these are all dry and ready for gritting up and we have our check hedgehogs. We've got our little cross beams for our barbed wire. We have our stakes for our entanglement barbed wire. And we have our symbolic minefield. Okay, and the next job is just to grit them up. Now to do this, dead simple, I've got Sort of a mixture of fine basin grit. It's a mixture of very fine sand, a very t slight mix of slightly coarse grit. Okay, I've got PVA there, and all I'm gonna do is, and I'll use this brush, is go my PVA. Yeah, and I'm just gonna brush it all on. So I'll do this quickly. That's it all PVA'd up guys, and the next job I've got to do is, I just need to grit it up. So I'm just going to hold it like that, I've got my grit here, and all I'm going to do is give it a bit of a sprinkle. Yeah. Spin it round, grab the other side. Oh, come on. I'm trying not to get grit stuck to my fingers. <laughs> yeah. And then once that's done, I just need to do the edges. So what I'm going to do is, just dip it along like that. Yeah, tap off the excess, and there you have it guys, all gritted up, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very quickly grit up the rest of these, and then once they're done, I'll show you them once they're all done, yeah? Right, back in a sec. So there we have it guys, all gritted up, yeah, we've got our entanglements, our standard barbed wire, our symbolic minefield, and our check hedgehogs. Yeah, I've also added two, uh, three little nipples onto my mines, yeah, because they looked a bit, 
They didn't look right flat, okay? Now I did these out of a little bit of plastic card with a hole puncher. Remember, you could just use a blade, yeah, get a bit of barbecue skewer and just cut it into slivers. You can get a bit of watch glue, a bit of rod, you can get, you know, a bit of sprue and just, you know, a little bit of filing. But it'll just add to the final look of it. Now what we need to do is leave these to dry. Once they're dry, we'll come back and we will base coat them up. Okay, so let, I'll see you once these are dry, ready for base coating, guys. So they're all dry now and they're ready for base coating. Start painting up and finishing off. Yeah, now for the base coat, I'm going to use my a stereotypical, really dark brown. Yeah, I've got some on my palette here. Yeah, but because they're not sealed, what I want to do is mix a little PVA in with the mix. Come on. Squidgy, squidgy. How'd you come? You will come out. Obey me. Ooh, been a little struggle. <laughs> thrilling footage, both thrilling footage. They are about that much PVA and about that much. That's all you really need. Yeah, I'm going to mix it in with me brush because I'm really sloppy as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, and all we're going to do is drop that down there. And I pick up one of our pieces, I check hedgehogs. Yeah, and we're going to dab it. Now, once you put the base colour down, important, do not re go over the area because it's not sealed. The moisture in the paint will reactivate the, the grit and it will all become loose and slide around. Yeah, so do it, move on. Simple as that. Right, I'm going to get all these done and we'll come back once they're all base coated up, you know, once I've got the earth colour on them. So guys, I've base coated up all our pieces and with our bog standard barbed wire with our sort of towel spacers, I've gone for my bog standard house paint dark brown. Yeah, quite nice. Moving on, yeah, for our Czech hedgehogs and our minefields. Yeah, we've gone with the base brown and then all we've done is we've gone in with an olive dra uh, green drab, yeah, which is, I think this cat and dream for my scrap paints. Yeah, and then for a little bit of change for our low level entanglement wires, yeah, we've gone for a bit of terracotta, yeah, so we can mess those up. Now I want to wash these down a bit, add a little extra detail to them. Okay, so we'll start off with these, okay, the Czech hedgehogs. Yeah, now obviously they would be chipped, etc. Yeah, so I want to put a little bit of chipping on those. So I've got a bit of grey. Yeah, put it out there. Nice dark grey on it. And then what I've got, I've got a sponge. Yeah, so spread my grey out. Get my sponge. And all we're going to do is just stipple some edges. Yeah, so if I come up, doesn't need much, it just needs a bit of a contrast. Okay. Just to break it up. So if I bring it up now, yeah, do you see the difference? Yeah. Once that's had a wash on it, it'll look lovely. Right, I'll crack on with this one. I'll bring it back once it's done. Right, so there we have it. They've still got dry. Yeah, but that's broken up that drab green. We're going to put a wash over it once that's dry and that'll just blend it all out and then a little bit of rust. Right, moving on. Okay, next up we have our terracottas and our basic drab greens. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a wash on these. Yeah, just to sort of give a bit of like shading, etc. Yeah, and then over here, yeah, they're a little bit too terracotta, so we're going to darken those down. Yeah, and for my wash, I'm going to go for a little bit of black yeah and a little bit of our base brown yeah sort of a 50 50 mix should do it oh that's nowhere near 50 50 both give it a mix and see how it comes out right guys there you go yeah nice and dark yeah we're gonna get a bit of water splash that on thin it out a bit yeah i'm only making sort of a quick and easy wash here yeah and all i'm gonna do is just come along yeah and Spread it out over it, yeah. And that'll dry out, and gives that a sort of patchy look to them and sort of take that matte look off them, which is, yeah, you know what I mean? Right, I'm gonna do that on these, I'm gonna do it on our terracotta pieces, I'm probably gonna do it on those and those, and we'll come back once they're all done, guys. Yeah? Right, see you in a sec. So the washes are all dry and they're looking rather good. There you go, very nice. 
Right, next job is to add flock, but obviously we've got barbed wire. Now for the barbed wire, as I said before, I'm using double wrap security seal. There you go. Yeah, remember there's a Let's Play video on how to make easy barbed wire, so go check that out if you can't get your hands on this stuff. Yeah, now, it's a bit interesting with the flocking because some of the pieces we're gonna add the barbed wire to after the flocking, yeah, specifically that one, or Ant Evans low level entanglement wire. Yeah, I'm gonna make Ant famous. Yeah, and then we've got this one. Yeah, gotta to touch that up a little bit. Yeah, uh, but with this one, what I want to do is I want to drop the barbed wire onto this as we flock it. So what we'll do is we'll flock this one quickly because that'll show you the flocking and I can do the barbed wire and the others are just flocking, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're all good at flocking around here. Right, so what I've done is I've got my double wrap security seal wire. Yeah, I've put it through a bit of dowling. I've wrapped it round to get this coil effect. And then what I'm going to do is get another one. Yeah, sort of squidge them together because that makes a good, really nice entanglement. Should we do another? Yeah, let's do another. I've got a few. I prepared these earlier. Right, drop these in. Yeah, just squeeze them in. Just roll them in your hand. Yeah, and they'll all drop sort of in together and make that sort of tanglement look. Yeah, here's a quick tip for you. If you do this and you do like three rows, okay, do a massive meter long piece of it. And then, pretty much, get a two P piece, yeah, a bit of super glue, hot glue, whatever glue, but make sure you glue it at the edges. So the two, t the two P piece, yeah, has glue at the edges. Yeah, not in the middle. If you put it in the middle, then as it moves, it'll work its way off, so it's got to be at the edges. But if you put two peas, say, roughly every eight inches along it, you get, pl and then obviously flock them up, guys, you get like a, a, a long coil, yeah, that's weighted down, that you can just put around things for that sort of continuous barbed wire. Yeah, just a little tip for you. Should have really shown you, but you can figure that one out. Two peas, guys, remember, the important thing is the glue on the edges. If you put it in the middle, it'll wiggle about and it'll come off. Yeah, so we've got to whack this down. So what I'm going to do is dead simple. I'm going to drop this literally straight on here. I'm going to wedge it down over these. But I'm not going to do it until we put our glue on. The reason being is that if I put this down and fix this down first, yeah, then when I try and PVA this to put what you call it to put my flock on, I'm going to end up with it all over the wires. So instead, a bit of PVA, yeah, uh, brush. Come on, both get it together. Or, uh, Clean it off, wipe it on my jeans. She case it's gonna kill me. Yeah, get me PVA. And all I'm gonna do is put some PVA on this, so I'll be back in a sec. So there you have it guys, and what I've done is I've got my bottle and I've I've given it an, an all over coat, yeah, but I've dropped blobs of PVA in between. Yeah, not one long line, yeah, that'll cause it to warp. Just blobs, yeah, so they're broken up. And then what I'm gonna do is very first my wire. Yeah, so I get my wire, I come along. You'll notice I'm leaving it draped over the edges here. I'm not worried about getting it spot on. Come on, wiggle in, you git. That's it, in you go. I've got to wiggle it just a little bit. Come on. Yeah, and I'm going to push them down so they get into the PVA. Now they're in the PVA, next job is, I want to do a bit of high line, so, yeah, very much, I'll do a two-tone with this, dark flock first, and I'll give it a bit of a sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle. Yeah, a, lot, a good sprinkle around where the bases of those, of those uprights are. Yeah, there you are, I should move my camera here. <laughs> That's a bit of a faux pas, folks. And then I get my bog standard hobby flock. Pop that open, yeah, so there we are. I pick it up very carefully. When have I ever done anything very carefully? Yeah, throw it in there, just like that. Come on, in you go, get in there. Come on, all the way. Yeah, tap it off. And then here's the final trick. Now obviously, the wire is gonna to want to jump up. Okay, so what you're gonna do, yeah, and this is just to show you. Yeah, I put that down like that. If you're making lots of these, you'll have to rig it up with a book or something. I get something like a block, yeah, and then I get, let's say my lid. So I need to position this just right. And if I rest that like that, yeah, that is gonna hold the wire under there down flat as it glues. Yeah, now obviously, I suggest you use a book or something like that, you know what I mean? Don't use the, the, the flock. I'm gonna put these up to one side and get something else on it. But do you see the principle by using that, yeah, to sort of level it off and then use this to press it down, that'll make it grip. Don't rest them like that, because what you'll do is you'll force your barbed wire one way, you know, it'll sort of squeeze out one end. Yeah, 
but it will work lovely. Right, I'm going to sort of set that up and then I'm going to flock these up and we'll come back once they're done, yeah guys? Right guys, these are all dried now. I've never ring them up. Yeah, you can see how resting that book on it. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah? Almost finished. Almost. There's a few things we need to do. Right, what do we need to do, Bosicle? Well, dead simple. Yeah, we've got to rust a few of these up. So to rust them up, what we're going to be doing is using a bit of this Fiery Orange. Fiery Orange. Yeah, and just a little bit of dab around. Yeah, I'll show you how to do that. Yeah, just to break up the, the colours a bit. Yeah, over on our mines, if I bring these up. Now remember, these are symbolic mines. In real life, you'd never see the mines. So what I'm thinking is, just to make them pop a little bit more, we'll get a little bit of red, and we'll just drop it on the top of these sort of triggers, just to make them stand out a bit. I mean, if you're gonna see them, you might as well see them, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was tempted to put a little bit of red on the nipples, but I think we'll leave those as they are, to be truthful. Yeah, and then finally, yeah, we've got the job I really haven't been looking forward to. Yeah, and that's getting this wire yeah, and sort of running it in between all these sort of points where we cut our little V's, yeah, okay, and I'm going to go from there to there, 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 across to there, down there, and back again, yeah, and it's going to be really fiddly, and damn you, Anna Evans, damn you. <laughs> right, so what am I going to do? Well, starting off with this one, we'll leave the painting, because I'm just putting a little bit of dabs on, I'll come to that when we get to it. Yeah, but basically, I've got a coil of my barbed wire here. Yeah, same stuff as we used on all the other stuff. All I'm going to do is come along. Yeah, find my little hole. And force it in. Slowly. Like I say, this is going to be fiddly. Right, I'll see you once I've got this in. Right, guys, that's the wire in. And if I bring it up, there you go. Yeah, dead simple, weaving from one side to another. It was a little fiddly to start off, then I got the knack of it. Yeah. So one side, then the other, all the way back again, and then two rows, and you get that. Now, I, you can see little bits of white on it. Now, that's where we've, we've pushed in, we've split the cardboard. Not the cardboard, the plastic card. There's also a little bit of paint come off, but we've got our orange for that. Now, we're going to rust up, okay? Before we do, very quickly show you this one. Yeah, this is our minefields. Now, what I decided was they needed a little bit of red. Yeah, so a couple of touches of red, and then once we've had our clump foliage to that, that'll look quite nice. Yeah? Remember, these are, are sort of symbolic mines. You wouldn't see them in real life. So, rusting up. All good battlefields have nice rusty barbed wire. And what we've got here is we've got a fiery orange. I've watered it down a little on my palette. Yeah, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, and wherever it's touching stuff, yeah, I'm going to put a little bit on and I need to water that down a bit because that's a bit strong. Yeah. If I bring that round, there you go. Okay, now that will dry out. Remember, it's a lot brighter when it's wet. It'll dry a lot nicer. Yeah, so all I'm going to do now is just go along with my orange and put loads of little bits of orange all over this. Yeah, and then we'll come back when it's ready for the final flocking and foliaging. Okay, right, see you shortly, guys. Okay, guys, that's that all done. We've rusted them up. We've got them on. So if I bring that up, yeah, you can see how we put the rust on there. Yeah, I've, I've used that orange. And then what I've done is very quickly, I've just mixed up a little bit of a, a dirty blacky brown and just given another quick wash over just to tone it down a little. So, barbed wire, low level entanglement, all stuck. Yeah, and you can see how that orange has worked on those perfectly. Yeah. With regards to our little red dots, there you go. Now, the last thing remaining is we just need to get some clump foliage on these. So, what I've got here is a little bit of PVA on there. Yeah, we've got a little bit of clump foliage here. And all I'm going to be doing is going along, grabbing a little bit, yeah, dumping it in my PVA, coming down, finding somewhere to stick it, let's stick it in there. Yeah, pop it onto that. Yeah, now I'm going to be doing that with a little bit of clump foliage, and I've got these tufts here. Okay, so, those for my army paint, those are foreground, I think, yeah? Bits of the trees are ripped off. So, we will whack those on, and then we will come back when they're all done. All right? So, guys, all done. Let's bring them up. Right, there's a little bit of wash that's still drying, and I've got a sealant, which I'll, I'll do with a little watered-down PVA. I'll probably as well, one part PVA, four parts water, just dab it on, seal the flock up. But, there you go. Yeah, so, that's our Czech Hedgehogs. 
Here's our symbolic minefields. They're quite nice. Okay, moving on. We have our standard rolls of barbed wire. Yeah, and I really do like those. I'll have to make more of those. Get me chindits hiding behind them. Yeah, and then finally, Ant Evans low level entanglement wire. You owe me a pint for that, Ant. It was a pain in the backside job. <laughs> yeah, but there you are. Right, here are some photos, guys, and I'll set up for the long shot. So guys, that wraps up this Let's Make, and as you can see, making infantry obstacles is actually pretty easy. Yeah, my recommendation to you is pick a particular style, whether it's minefield, check hedgehogs, low-level entanglement wire, or your normal sort of barbed wire rolls. Do a load of bases, eight or nine or ten of them, yeah, so you've got an entire set, before moving on to the next, because that way you get into that sort of... Uh, automation, you know, the sort of manufacture process of it. You'll be able to knock them out in loads of, in no time at all, compared to flipping between different styles. They're all achievable, you've seen all the techniques here, it's dead easy to do. Now obviously if you've liked it, like it. If you know anyone who wants this, you know, give it a share. And as always, if you've got anything to add, any questions, anything like that, that's what the comments are for. Now, the next one that's coming up is going to be battlefield-wise. We're going to be looking at tank traps and countryside, countryside scenic sort of wild. We're going to be looking at farm fields and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so we've got more Let's Makes coming along with our normal technical terrain tutorials and that sort of stuff and build overviews and all that sort of glorious stuff. So we are very busy as usual. Now, if you, like always, if you're liking these videos, if you like what you're doing, we are currently fundraising. Now, we are fundraising on Patreon to get extra days in the studio. I'm doing them live, but the extra days are in the studio filming more of these tutorials for you guys. So if you want more tutorials like this, please consider jumping on the Patreon thing. I only ask a dollar, just one dollar. It's not a pint, it's not a coffee, it's not even a bloody pork pie. And to be perfectly honest, I don't even think it's a packet of crisps anymore. Yeah, but it does help me. It gets me in the studio making terrain for you, you know. You get me out of the warehouse and you, at the end of the day, you help me put food on the table, yeah. So it's really appreciated, your help is really appreciated, guys. So if you haven't already, Come join, jump on the Patreon team and, you know, and if you're not into Patreon, remember, there's a PayPal link down below. You can send a, a digital one-off, you know. It's all appreciated, guys. It really is. So, I'm going to leave it with that. We're going to wrap it up because Mel's rambling as usual. When don't I ramble, eh? Yeah, so, uh, what is it? It's Tuesday now. You'll see a channel update on Thursday and I will be, in fact, you'll see me before then because Wednesday night we've got one of these live sessions. So, if you want to see what it's all about, Nip in Wednesday night, and if not, if you're not into the live thing, I'll see you Thursday with a channel update, yeah? In the meantime, you have a great time. Crack on, Terraniacs. Ta-da!